Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm gonna help you, if you're a beginner, understand how to hit a topspin forehand. Now, I've got the Topspin Pro with me for this video, an incredible product. I am an affiliate. You can check out my affiliate link in the description below. So, what I would first recommend right now, if you wanna follow along here, is that we do this first part without your racket because it's important to know what your body should be doing while hitting a topspin forehand. So first understand that there are three basic movements when hitting a topspin forehand when it comes to your body. When the ball comes to your forehand side, the first thing you're going to do is you are going to turn. We don't want to hit forehands while facing forward. Trust me, it's not gonna be in your best interest. By the end of this video, you'll see why. So the moment the ball comes to you on your forehand side, you're gonna turn toward your forehand side. Now, the reason we can't start this way is because when we're playing, we have to face forward, so if it comes to our backhand, we can do the same thing on our backhand side. Yes, we start by facing forward when we play tennis, but that isn't because we want to be forward. It's because we aren't sure which way to turn until our opponent hits the ball to us. So we see the ball come to our dominant side, we then turn to that side, and we're gonna move in that way. Right, so you're not necessarily gonna be doing all the movement while facing forward and at the last second turn, watch the pros. The moment the ball comes off the opponent's racket, they turn and they probe and they move around. Unless the ball is way out in front of them and they've got a sprint to get there, but typically any normal ball that comes your way, you're gonna turn. The second move after you turn is gonna be to drop. And the reason we wanna drop is it's, help, it's going to help us get the racket down below contact so that we can swing up and brush up the back of the ball. Again, I'll use the Topspin Pro to demonstrate that in a little bit, but trust me, we want the body to drop. The amount that it drops will be based on the ball. If the ball's pretty low, we're gonna drop a lot to help get the racket below contact so we can spin it. Spin is a tennis player's way of controlling the ball. No different than spinning the ball in billiards or you know, spinning the ball in bowling. You want to be able to add spin, and when you add spin, you add control. So getting the body down below contact allows us to swing up the back of the ball and get the ball spinning. And the last movement we're gonna make with the body is to undo those two movements, but simultaneously. So the first move was to turn, the second move was to drop our body, and now the third move is gonna undo both of those at the same time. So I'm turning to my side, I'm bending down, but now I'm gonna face the camera again while coming up and turning back toward the camera, like a corkscrew. So I'm gonna go up and turn toward the camera, and when, the, when that happens, my back foot turns up on the toe like I'm a golfer. So here are the three basic movements before we even understand what the racket should be doing. It's turn, drop, and then come up with your body at the same time. That would be just a great drill. If you're a coach, have your players do that, just to understand what the body does. We, we work as coaches, we work so much on the grip and the path the racket should be taking, but really you want synchronization of the body and racket. You want the body and racket working together. So we gotta know what to do with the body so it can work with the racket. So turn, drop, and then come up at the same time. I'll show you from the side. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna drop, and then I'm gonna come up and turn at the same time. By the way, if you're a two-handed backhand user, it's the exact same thing on the two-handed backhand. So now, with the racket, we get to understand the path that the racket's gonna take. So I'll turn this around and I'll face the camera at first and then I'll show you from the side. So the ready position. You want your elbows out. If I take tennis balls and I put them in my armpits, I'm gonna lift my elbows up until the tennis balls fall out. You don't want your elbows in. It will make for a less consistent contact. You actually want your elbows away from your body in a good you know, two-handed backhand, even one-handed backhand, forehand. When your elbows are out, it helps keep the swing from getting too big and it actually helps you to get topspin as well. So trust me, you want your elbows out in the ready position. Now remember, we have to turn our body when the ball comes to us on the forehand side. So we're actually gonna use that turn as the way to take the racket back. I don't want you to think of the backswing on a forehand as you know you see the ball come to you and you hand your racket to someone behind you. That is not the way you are going to, again, have synchronization of the body and racket. That just means that we want the body and racket to work together, so let your turn be the backswing. 
So I'm actually gonna hit some forehands right now uh, on the Top Spin Pro. And I just want you to notice that the way my racket goes back is simply by turning my body. Now I can do that by just turning this foot on the toe. I could do it by going forward. I could do it by stepping back. This is all gonna be based on the ball you see coming. But simply put, the way you get your racket to go back is to just turn the body. And you can see that I'm not pulling my arm back. I'm just turning my body. Use the coil to take the racket back so you can uncoil in order to hit a great forehand. So let me just hit some balls here. Watch how my backswing is simply because my body is rotating. I'm rotating my body. You'll notice the head of my racket is above my hands. You don't want to take the racket down. If your racket goes down, it has to stop to come back forward again to hit. And if somebody hits the ball very fast, if somebody hits the ball very deep, if the ball has some spin on it and the ball kind of kicks toward you, you're going to be late often. It's usually what happens is as players get better at tennis, their forehand gets worse if their racket goes down. So with the head of the racket up and two headed monster, or two heads are better than one, we want to turn with the head of the racket a very similar height as your head. It can go up slightly even, but we don't want the racket going down. So I turn my whole body. You can see both hands are still on the racket. Again, I can do this by just turning my foot on the toe to hit. I can do this by stepping back. I can do this by stepping forward. It's going to be all based on the ball coming to you, but the backswing is really the body turning. When the racket is up in the back, now I get to use gravity assisted racket speed. I'll show you this from the side. Because I'm turning my body to take the racket back and the racket head is above my hand, now to get to the ball, I get to allow the racket to drop. As the racket falls, it's going to pick up speed. It's kind of like driving your car downhill. Yes, you can still hit the gas pedal, but driving your car downhill, you can go faster than driving your car uphill because you have gravity assisted acceleration. It's no different. Now we get to accelerate the racket with gravity. Now, as we're doing this, that's when we're gonna be dropping our body as well. And I'm gonna show you some pros here in a second doing exactly what I'm, I'm explaining. You're gonna see them turn with both hands on the racket. Then as the body drops and they'll step out with this front foot, you'll see their racket drop below the level of the ball. When you hit a tennis ball, it is in your best interest to spin the ball. And you can see the ball rotating. When you hit a tennis ball, it is not in your best interest to hit flat into the back. Because when you hit flat into the back of the ball, when the ball leaves your racket, the only thing controlling that ball is gravity. And you're hoping that that ball comes down in time What's before it hits, you know, reaches the baseline. What you really want to do is use spin to help bring that ball down. It's almost like adding extra gravity to your tennis court where you hit the ball and it's like, shoom, the ball just gets sucked down into the court. You'll almost have the feeling like you can't even miss. So we want to take the racket back by turning the body, but then we want to drop down below the ball. When the racket is lower than the ball, that allows me to swing up to the ball and spin up the back. Now remember, we drop the body down and I'm not going to then, because I'm hitting the ball this way, I'm not going to keep my body facing the camera as I'm coming up. This is when we're going to turn the back foot on the toe, just like a golfer. So it's turn the body, drop the body, and then rise and face forward toward our target at the same time. So it's three movements, turn, drop, then come up and turn at the same time. Watch me hit a couple. As I'm hitting this ball, I'm getting the ball to spin. Top spin is gonna be created, a top spin that's gonna allow the ball to go over the net when your strings are facing over the net and your racket's going from the ground to the sky. I turn my body with both hands, I drop down below the ball, and then I come up at the same time. As I'm rotating my body, almost like I'm squishing a bug with my back foot up on the toe, you'll notice I'm catching the racket with my left hand since I'm right-handed. This is optional if you're a pro player, but if you are, I'm sure, an amateur, a club player, recreational player watching this video, 
I highly recommend that you catch the ball, sorry, catch the racket with your non-hitting hand. Here's why. One little detail that is so critical that, and since you're a beginner or maybe a, a, a lower intermediate player watching this video, it's important that we create good habits. One bad habit I see players your level doing and, and making is dropping the non-hitting hand as the ball is being struck. So watch my non-hitting hand. See how it's dropping? When you watch Serena, when you watch Dominic Team, when you watch Victoria Zarenka, uh, Del Paltro, you'll see their non-hitting hand rising and their non-hitting hand is coming up. The reason for this is, remember, we have to come up and turn our body and turn this back foot up on the toe. If the non-hitting hand is dropping as you're hitting, then you won't be able to turn your hips because the racket is going this way, but the left arm is going this way. So it becomes a counterweight and it makes it nearly impossible to turn the hips. You'll swing around your body, you'll get side spin and the ball will take off like a frisbee and go long. So what you wanna do is learn to raise your, your non-hitting hand, I was about to say left hand, but if you're right-handed, it's your left hand. If you're left-handed, it's your right hand. Raise your non-hitting hand as you're hitting the ball. And one easy way to ensure that is have the non-hitting hand go up and then catch the racket in that hand. Even players who finish with two hands on the racket in a club setting, in a tennis club setting, tend to drop this arm and then add the non-hitting hand to the racket, which doesn't have the same benefit because the ball doesn't know that you caught it at the end. The ball only will know if you, or your body will only know if your hand is rising as you are striking the ball. Then I want you to catch. Do, do all the pros catch the racket? No, actually very few pros catch the racket as they're striking the ball. So why do I teach that? Uh, I just had somebody, a woman in the comment section, maybe a week ago asked, you know, my pro, my, my local pro is telling me to finish here, like Fetter. Why do you catch the racket so high? And the reason is because I want to play my best tennis and I'm not Roger Fetter, right? Roger Fetter can play his best tennis finishing like this. I can't. I, that's just not, right? I'm not that good of a tennis player that I'm on the pro tour. That's why I'm a tennis coach, right? So you've got to go this way with your non-hitting hand up and then catching the racket kind of ensures that you're doing the most important part, which is the non-hitting hand rising as you're striking the ball. I want you to watch these pros right now, and I want you to watch it a few times. The first time, just watch their body. Watch the pros turn, drop the body down, and then come up and turn back toward the court with their back foot on the toe. And then I want you to watch their racket. Watch how the racket is above their hand with two hands on, Watch how the racket drops below the ball. Watch how their body rotates back toward the net. Watch their non-hitting hand as it's rising. The non-hitting hand is rising as they're hitting. And then some of the pros you're about to watch will even catch the racket in their non-hitting hand. So I'll see you back here in a second after you check out this footage. So after you're done watching this video, I want you to just practice. You can do this in your living room or your basement right now. I want you to practice at first just turning the body. I want you, if this is the direction I'm going to hit the ball, just turn your body, drop your body, and then undo both of those at the same time. Come up and turn back toward the court. So I'm facing the court. I'm going to turn. I'm going to drop. And then I'm going to come up and turn at the same time. Back foot comes up on the toe. 
then do it with your racket and have your racket go with your body. Your body turns, the racket goes back. Your body drops, the racket goes down. Now you're gonna swing up diagonally, not just straight up and not just straight forward, so up diagonally as you're hitting the ball up high into your non-hitting hand. Turn, drop, turn forward and come back up. We wanna use those legs to get under and then press up as we are striking the ball. If you work as a beginner, as an intermediate player, if you work on using the body and the racket together, there is no doubt you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from twominutetennis.net. You got this.